I totally agree that um, that they should be a uh, you know, some pressure ease for the for the fishers on the on the fuel. Uh, from the inception of this fuel tax, um, we have seen a lot of um, changes in terms of expenses. A lot of the vessels um, were complaining that they were experiencing challenges, given also their the low catches, the change in the seasons and how fish is landed um, and we know that once a vessel leaves here it doesn't matter how much fish it brings it has to use the same amount of fuel to to go out and um, you know and it ain't only the, the 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 fuel but also the expense the ice and all the other inputs into deploying a vessel that has really significantly impact the fishers and the fisher for. We would like to be able to sell our fish, um, you know, cheaper for the consumers to be able to have better access to prices. But the reality is that the vessel is the first um, means of the fishing industry. And therefore, we have to consider how we can assist the, the fishers and the the vessel owners are setting some of these expenses because it is really, it is really um, high. I have had meetings with some of the fishers and they were able to share some of the changes, the expenses in the last, um, like say five years or so, before the implementation of the fuel tax. And it was a significant, significant change in the, in the prices and, you know, I think that we would like to, you know, see a call, um, you know, a response from government in easing the fishers because it is not like a, a bus or a truck that could pull up side of the road and at least save some of their expenses, you know, like moving once the vessel is on the high seas, it have to be using the engine. So they will obviously have to be using the diesel at all times and, it, and, and one of the challenges also is because some persons are unable to um, you know take in the same amount of fuel it means that persons have to um, consider how far they will be able to go and fish and uh, right now you know um, even catching fish persons have to be going you know a little further out but of course the, the challenge is also you know the, the, the diesel. I, I certainly certainly agree. Um, I think it was in the last year, maybe a year, year to 18 months, where we used to get flow from the Bristol port, uh, duty free, totally duty free. And it was a really a good savings to us. When this government got into power, um, they increased the VAT on it. We still, I think we get the VAT, I think we get a portion of the VAT off. But the cost has gone to about a third of what we, we, we usually pay. And in these times now where the fish catch is very small, very, very small, the fluid impact on us is extremely, extremely costly. So I am totally in agreement with Senator Drake that if the industry, and this, this efficient, efficient industry is a mighty million dollar industry. If the industry is to, to, to maintain, through the boat owners and fishermen, then concession has to be given with the flow. So what's it look for now? Uh, let me see. Fish prices are going to be up for the simple reason that these are going up. And by the kind of boat that you have, like for me that have a long line boat, my diesel bill going to be high. Okay? Because the boat has to be continuously running. It, it doesn't get to like you go, you steam go fishing, you go 150 miles and you sit down and you drift. But with a long line boat, you have to be setting, you gotta be picking back up, you gotta be going back up to your gear. You understand? So, for us in order to thrive. You would like the VAT removed? If the VAT removed. The same way some years ago, a few years back, we, we used to go in so the fellas used to go in the port and get duty-free diesel. That gets stopped. Okay. 
Sometimes, you know, some of the guys turn around, decide, you know, they're going down St. Vincent, especially the bigger boats, going down St. Vincent and getting the diesel cheaper, and come back. So, everything is a cost.